Hello, welcome back and thank you as always for tuning in here. We're continuing a discussion that we've begun here recently about learning, really learning to perceive everything as either an expression of love or a call for love. It's not something that we're necessarily taught growing up. So it should come as absolutely no surprise that we're confounded by it in adulthood and sometimes shocked and surprised, sometimes in denial, and other times gleefully and, and gladly accepting that truth is true, <laughs> that things actually are different than the way we've been seeing them. Because the way we've been seeing them has not brought us the peace of God. It has brought us moments of peace, maybe some glimpses, possibly even some extended glimpses of it. It may have brought us money and some fantastic meals, some beautiful relationships, maybe a couple or three or four hot, sexy weekends with somebody. But it has not brought us the peace of God, so we find ourselves right here. We find ourselves engaged in the process because it looks like a process of spiritual practice. Because we know that there's something more to it than simply looking at this thing in the mirror and gratifying its needs. There's more to it than that. Clearly, there's more to it than the bills. There's more to it than paying the rent or the mortgage. Um, that's important here in the world. But there's more to it than all of this. So let's look beyond all of this. Welcome. We're looking at some very, very powerfully reinforced language here in chapter 12, section 1, paragraph 8, to be exact, of the text of A Course in Miracles. Now, this section is entitled The Judgment of the Holy Spirit, and the central premise that I want to talk about today is the teaching, the idea that everything that you do, everything that your brother does, anything anyone ever does, is either an expression of love or it is a call for love. A call for healing and help. Anything nasty that somebody appears to do or say here is a call for help. And we're invited to let this thought permeate our mind, and we're invited to make sure that it permeates our mind and takes over our mind by applying these ideas in our day-to-day -day life, where the real learning takes place. It's one thing to understand all of these ideas with the intellectual thinking mind, and it's another thing entirely to put them into practice. That is where the action lies. That's where the true learning takes place because our experience shows us. It proves to us that these ideas are true. When we extend love to the Son of God, our experience teaches us that our brother is us. When we forgive, we learn that we're forgiven. There is no separation of any kind. Your brother is you. Now, here in the world where we've been conditioned to think that our reality is 
severely limited to the demands and constraints and the needs of this device, this apparatus, the physical body, when we think that's us, we're severely limiting ourselves. And, and we know this, or we wouldn't be interested in spirituality. It doesn't make any difference what tradition or traditions you grew up with, if any. And it makes absolutely no difference what you're practicing now, if anything. These ideas are universal. They're, they're universal. We have the choice to listen to them or not. We have the choice to forgive our brother or not. It's quite that simple. It really is. So the Holy Spirit, our inner teacher, will interpret everything in our experience for us, if only we allow him to do so. If only we allow him to do so. And the Holy Spirit's judgment applies to all of us. Our inner teacher is inner. Hence the emphasis in this series of videos on our inner teacher. This is part of our mind the part of our mind that knows, that speaks truly. The Holy Spirit is known throughout A Course in Miracles as the voice for God. And that is perhaps the most common name by which the Holy Spirit goes here in the Course. It's also, it is also the answer with a capital A, comforter with a capital C, mediator, all of them capital letters, M, and many other names as well. So if you're new to this material, you'll find that we're using the masculine pronouns he, him, to refer to the Holy Spirit and God. The Holy Spirit is not a person. So technically it's an it. And you know what? You can call it whatever you want. Mike, that will work. Betty, I don't know. You may call our inner teacher by more than one name and refer to it as your guides. That really doesn't matter. Names are just symbols in the end anyway. What really matters is your connection to your inner teacher, your willingness to let your inner teacher run the show. His judgments apply to all of us. Everything that we experience, everything that our brother does, and of course, anything that we do, is either an expression of love or it is a call for love. Anything nasty that a brother may do is a call for love. We see this with small children, don't we? And this is an idea that shouldn't really be foreign to us, and it's not when we really think about it. Because when we look at the behavior of small children, we recognize this all of the time, that someone is acting out, let's say a toddler is acting out and wants attention, wants love from an adult, from, the, from you know, his or her mom, dad, whomever. This young person wants love and is acting out. It's a call for love. The same applies for adults. So how do we undo the ego? How do we undo this false sense of self? Well, first of all, we need some present moment awareness because we have to recognize 
what's going on. There are many people in many different spiritual traditions that counsel us to look directly at fear. Yes, yes. This course says the same thing. We have to recognize it and look at it. We have to become aware of the problem in order to solve it. If we're unaware of our fear, we continue to spin on the proverbial hamster wheel and cycle around the drain, if you want to see it that way. And if you're familiar with Buddhism and Eastern philosophy, we stay in samsara, which actually means wheel in Sanskrit, which is apt, hamster wheel, again and again and again and again and again, recycled guilt, recycled guilt and blame. Yeah, I didn't get it this time, coming back for more, da 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 da, -da. right? And incidentally, it's not necessary that, uh, it's not at all necessary that you go in for the idea of rebirth or anything like that. If that helps you, great. If that doesn't help you, perfect. Not a problem. Just think of your current lifetime and how we all do this constantly, constantly, constantly. And we do it all the time. Want to stop? Good then I invite you to stick around. This recognition of fear is, is critical. It's extremely helpful because in doing this, we recognize our need for escape. Now, here's where the really important part comes in. We are invited to allow the Holy Spirit to reinterpret fear. That's step number two. Let the Holy Spirit reinterpret fear for us. Let the Holy Spirit reinterpret our brother's nasty behavior as a call for love. Let's see it for what it is. This reinterpretation step that we ourselves allow is critical. Otherwise, we'd be left with looking at fear, and we've made it real to ourselves anyway. That would simply freak us out even more, and we certainly don't want, and we certainly don't need that drama. We've got enough drama in life. <laughs> There's no need to heap more on, so let's allow our inner teacher to reinterpret the scene, the situation. I often use the example of somebody posting something nasty, hateful, and, well, just awful on social media, because they can. Something divisive, something that's clearly an attack on a person or a certain group of people. So our habitual tendency on this our knee-jerk gut reaction might be to judge this person as incompetent, as an idiot, as mean, hateful, rude, dirty, or, or worse. I mean, name your adjective. You certainly don't have to type that out in the comments and start a social media war in public, though of course people do that. I mean, it's enough to think, hey, you know, this person's really, really an idiot. That's a judgment, isn't it? So let's take a look at fear. His and yours, right? Ours. Yeah. What's really going on? We take a look at this situation of nastiness where someone is lashing out and the other, us, we're judging in response. We're keeping this circle of suffering going. How do we break it? Learn to see things the way the Holy Spirit sees them. We are aware of a brother's lashing out, and we're aware of our instantaneous reaction to it. Rather than see it as an opportunity to attack and wall ourselves off even further, we see it as an opportunity to forgive. Because the Holy Spirit will show us that this hateful tirade that our brother has posted 
is a call for love. What then is the appropriate response to extend love? We forgive in our mind. We look at the fear and we allow the Holy Spirit to reinterpret it. And we come to learn in this process that the fear itself is an appeal for help. It is a call for love. What is fear? Hatred, blame. It's all fear. What is fear but a call for love? Now, here in the world where we categorize and subcategorize our entire experience and parse it out into what appear to be multiple component parts that seem rather endless, they're all made up, and we could let them all go right now, today. So we call fear by many names. There are really only two emotions, love or fear. Everything else is a derivative of that joy and happiness, limitlessness, a, a deep sense of peace. Those are all love. And sadness, guilt, blame, F-bomb-laced tirades, lashing out, deep unease, anxiety. These are all fear. So we can recognize fear in every single form that it appears to take as what it is. Is what it really is, a call for love. And we learn to perceive fear, attack, as a call for love, like we readily do with small children, where we say, that's a cry for help. It's a call for love. What's the appropriate response to extend love? Fear is a call for love. And what's going on here is it is an unconscious recognition of what has been denied. What has been denied? Love. And someone lashing out is an unconscious reaction. They're, when they're posting hatred on social media, possibly feeling quite self-righteous. I mean, perhaps you've done the same thing. They're feeling like they're right, and they're going to get this person or this group of people over here who don't see things the way I do, so they suck their scum. And so someone lashes out. And what's going on is they're denying love. A lashing out is a call for love, so it is this person's not aware, of course, it's unconscious that they're lashing out is if, in fact, a call for love. They want it unconsciously and not knowing any better, they're lashing out in order to get it, just as a toddler misbehaves in order to get loving attention from an adult. They're not aware that that's what they're doing. Same with your brother who could be 70 years old. A grown-up, an adult. It's an unconscious recognition of love. And if someone doesn't know how to get it, they're going to lash out in frustration, in fear, in guilt. What is the appropriate response true forgiveness of this person and the social media platform and the world itself, all of it. This is done in our mind. We don't have to type into the comments something along the lines of, hey, brother, I forgive you. That may be misinterpreted as condescending. <laughs> I'm just thinking of some live, up-close-and-personal cyber arguments that I've myself seen in the past couple of years. I mean, you've probably seen them too. 
And here's the funny thing that's actually not very funny at all. A number of these have come on spiritual-themed pages and discussion forums. Attack. The raw material for forgiveness is everywhere. It's everywhere to be seen. And should we have the present moment awareness to recognize this for what it is? Look that fear in the eye, directly look at it, then we allow our inner teacher to reinterpret that, to recast it so that we may see it as it really is a call for love. Everything, everything is either an expression of love or a call for love. This is not automatic, which is why it's emphasized and re-emphasized here in the course. Because as adult learners, we all possess a certain degree of stubbornness, do we not? So the repetition and the practice, the practical application of these ideas is, is critical. And again, I can't stress enough that that's where the real learning takes place, is in the moment-to-moment -moment practical application of these ideas. That's how we learn. Our experience shows us the ideas are true. In other words, we prove it to ourselves. So if you want proof, good. Prove it to yourself. And you'll be really, really happy, joyfully, and elated happy that you did. Okay, so thank you as always for tuning in. We're going through this course a little bit at a time here. And your questions are more than welcome. So there have been a number of great questions asked here right in the discussion forum here on YouTube, which is a great place to do it. So I invite them. There's no such thing as a question that's too basic or too beginner-ish anything like that. Because when you ask a question, there will be people on the other side of the world, most of whom, or perhaps all of whom, you're unlikely to physically meet in this lifetime that will benefit from your willingness to ask. There are people that have been at this for 30 plus years that need to hear what you may consider to be a very basic question. Today might be the day that your asking enables them to get it, where a light may go on. It's a very beautiful way to positively and lovingly impact the trajectory of someone on the other side of the world. So I do invite these questions. And of course, if you simply want to pop in and say hello, definitely please do that. I'd love to hear from you too. I want to thank all of you who have recently subscribed to this channel. There have been a number of you. So thank you for joining us. What you get here is A Course in Miracles. You deserve nothing less than that. These ideas are simple. We supply all of the complication. So we come back to our study and practice of these materials, of these ideas over and over again. That's what we do. It's practical. It's all about practical application. So thank you for joining us. Several videos appear each week. And if you have not subscribed, please do so. The prompt is right here in that corner of your screen. It's this arrow. And when you hover over that or click that, you'll be invited to subscribe and join us. Oh, and I should also point out that to those of you who are already subscribed, if you wish to turn on notifications of new videos, that is a setting that you can toggle on or off here on YouTube. It looks like a, a bell. It's a device notification that pops up on your screen. So if you wish to be notified of new videos, 
please do. Uh, my wife, Cindy, was kind enough to point that out to me this morning, uh, as she has uh, several times in the past, but she's got hers turned on so she can tell when I've posted a video. So if that's something you want to do, that's an option for you. All right. So thank you, as always, for joining me. I will talk to all of you again very soon.